Next up on Pax Americana. Rapid colonial growth in the colonies leads to calls for high investment in terraforming equipment and diversification of industry on the frontier. The UTS Columbia says goodbye to Earth as the carrier and its strike group are scheduled to be moved to and stationed on Terra Nova permanently. This is to protect the ever-growing population reaching a total of 25 million people, calling for increasing calls of autonomy for the small colony. The Navy gave an update on its TDX program, stating that its first vessels will finish construction within the year, those being the Austria, Deutschland and Belgium, with a planned total of 21 other destroyers of the same class, dubbed the Austria class, to be constructed as well. Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the next episode of Aurora Vorex uh, C Sharp Pax Americana episode number 12 of the series. We are here in 1996 dealing with some combat slowdown. But before we get into the episode, if you are enjoying, remember to support the channel in the best way you can, liking, commenting and whatnot. But I also have another announcement. In the description below, there is a link to the Discord, and on that Discord, we are currently in the process of creating a D&D uh, slash RP um, uh, world and history and all of that stuff that people can participate in as characters and whatnot in this universe, in Pax Americana. And that is going to be going from you know the history, the original history of the end of World War Three, to where we are today in 1996 and forward. If you are interested in that, you can head over to the Discord and there are channels set up to uh, give you more info and it's currently a work in progress, so any help is always welcome, of course. So, where are we in today's video? Well, we're continuing our build-up of Hawk class fighters and Comet class fighters, which we'll be using to replace many of the uh, current in-service FAAs that are situated throughout um, this, uh, throughout the, uh, the Empire. And we are continuing our colonization by moving our automated mines, uh, exploiting our asteroids, and overall our mineral situation is in a lot better place than it previously speaking was. So that's a, you know, that's a really good thing. We are also looking towards uh, our first North American class carriers, our n first ion class warships and deciding how we're going to be implementing those ships into uh, active service um, so that means you know Bernard Star as they seem to be our main adversary that is my goal is to take that territory another thing that we're doing here as you can see here is we're naming the new exploration class vessel the Red Sea which is going to be a class name and after the uh, one of the ships that were destroyed in the incidents uh, with the alien threat and we are going to be um, putting these into service relatively soon. So these are new 15,000 ton, um, uh, 15, ton ships. They have the ability to defend themselves. They have good sensors and geological capability. They are massive improvement over our previous generation Aegean class vessels. So the Red Sea vessels are going to prove a real boon for us coming up. Um, I'm also checking numbers of destroyers here because that will be the number of troops we'll need to replace. We order up the first three Austria class vessels, that being the New Guinea, or the, the first off the Austria class, Belgium and the Deutschland. So Austria, Belgium and Deutschland are the first three Austria class vessels to be constructed and we're going to need 24 of them. So there's another you know, 21 vessels to build there. Uh, so that's quite considerable when you really think about it. I also begin to think about, you know, our ground forces have kind of been neglected, and that's because we've been really focusing on modernizing our navy, expanding outwards, and we just haven't had a need for it. However, I realize that now we will need to invade, um, we will need to invade the precursor territories in terms of their planets, and that's going to require a lot of forces. Existing forces are currently out of date and in low numbers, so we are going to need to replace those with new uh, ones, that's for sure. Our 15th F120 Hawk just finishes construction, which is awesome to see. Just to look, just yes, last episode we started, you know, we built our first one. And we're researching minimum power engine modifiers. The reason I'm doing this is I want to create a lower fuel consumption commercial engine that's large, but will be able to be used on next generation or block two versions of our freighters. This will hopefully cut our fuel consumption in half. 
uh, for many of our regular trips, which is really, really important to me. Yorktown is also growing. We finally got our refueling station in the area, which means that we can start ship fuel over there. Um, and 109 Aquarius is growing at a quite a stable and a nice rate to see. Um, we're going to be moving over the cargo short stations and all the additional stuff that we've been moving over to our primary colony areas. Um, of course, this is all going to take some time uh, to accomplish and we're going to continue to build new stations for infrastructure. So in this case, we're building amber class fuel houses because again, as the fleet grows, we need more fuel consumption. Update on our large carrier, we're at 40,000 tons with our big yard. We'll need to get that 60,000 tons, of course, for our fleet carrier for the North America class. Our most advanced ship ever created, the largest and most advanced. And uh, we are making good progress in that. I think it was the right call to do what I did by moving that yard forward uh, using the bigger yard because bigger yards build quicker. It's kind of a snowball effect. Just finished up construction of three new short range tankers. So those are going to be used for ferrying fuel back and forth. I think these will particularly be going towards the Nelson military base we have in 61 Sydney. Um, and that's going to be their, their primary purpose. So these are the short haul fuel transports. Moving going to 61 Sydney, and they'll be moving fuel from Nelson military outpost, uh, from the fuel houses to Nelson military outpost every uh, so often. And it is, of course, going to mean we will need um, more fuel harvesters in system because we're going to be now supporting two different colonies, of course. We're also making progress in researching 25 centimeter laser railgun and uh, laser railgun, laser weapons. Uh, the reason for this is eventually I want to get to about 25, 30 centimeter uh, weapons in terms of lasers uh, for planned battleships. So 306 millimeter is around 12 inch guns, uh, which you know, which traditionally used on battleships. And so that's really what we're going to be looking at. And these ships are going to have heavy armor, long range weapons, or maybe only have one or two, or you know, a small, a small contingent of special uh, these battleships that can accompany assault fleets and provide the jump strike uh, capability that we're really looking for. They may sit at 25,000 to 30,000 tons, so half that of a, of a carrier. Many frigates are finishing up overhaul and our short range fuel harvesters have arrived at their location. Setting it up over our Nelson military base. Um, getting them all sorted out that we are waiting on some refueling station increases before we can do anything there. Further shipping lines have been created by the way. Our civilian industry has really started to pop off uh, in comparison to anything else. And we finish up the research of our new SIM-3A. So this is going to be for our Comet fighters. So we're going to be building those new missiles as needed um, for the Comets. And we eventually, we do swap out our production focus for our fighters because we've just built our 10th Comet and we've built our 21st F-120 Hawk. Um, because I make a mistake and I realize, hey, the Hawk is not really going to be viable on smaller um, smaller ships. So our light like carriers, it's just not going to be. So we're going to need to use smaller fighters to truly make it work uh, on those light carriers to keep them viable going forward. Um, because, you know, an adamant class can hold, an Akin class can hold 32 uh, F-80s and a Akin class can hold, uh, or adamant class can hold uh, 25 um, F-80s. So uh, an improvement over the previous F-8s, but still the F-120s would take way too much space and just not be an effectual fighting force. Consider our, su our quote unquote super carrier, our large carrier, can only hold 60 or 36 um, F-120s. Um, so that's quite limited when you really think about it. And uh, what I am going to decide to do is we're going to order the Columbia uh, to move to new uh, yeah, to Terra Nova. Uh, for protection and Columbia is 
Columbia is going to get a new fighter wing. So it's going to be the first carrier we'll be outfitting with a completely fresh fighter wing. Um, and because now Terra Nova and our further colonies have gotten enough capacity to be able to support a carrier, I've decided to take this approach. So I realized, oh, we can't actually fit all of these on here. And I'm like, okay, we're going to need to use F-80s. Um, because we can only actually carry a relatively small amount of F-120s. As you can see uh, here, we can only carry 13 F-120s on the Adamant class. Uh, which is, uh, how do we say, not a lot. <laughs> um, so I decided, okay, we're not going to use the Hawks. I'm going to get comets done. We're going to, we can carry 21 comets on this vessel, I remember. And, uh, you know, realistically speaking, that's quite a tiny fight, fighter uh, contingent when you think about it. Quite a tiny fighter contingent, you know, really at all. We've also begun to scrap our old F8s. Um, and a lot of these light carriers, I'm probably going to look at just converting either, either into keeping them around for, for a decade or so more just for uh, projection and colony defense and, uh, and uh, shipping line defense, like refit them. Um, because they just don't have the, the number of fighters that we truly need. Now, once we add them all up together, they're going to have a lot of fighters, but it's still not, not a lot when you think about it, right? Um, so, it's always something to consider. Because we do have to deal with, like, 50 enemy ships, which is just absurd, right? You know, 10 carriers isn't... It, it's a lot of ordnance, but we're going to need a lot of ordnance to actually make that work. Either way, we're scrapping out those F-8As, and now we're building those new fighters. And I, again, make the decision, okay, we're going to use the Comets. So, 32 Comets are allowed on the Aachen class, which is the 30,000 ton. But the Adamant's only uh, 20,000 tons. It's very small when you think about it. Um, and because it's relatively small, it, it, it's quickly becoming an obsolete uh, carrier, right? It, 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 it can be used for ferrying uh, stuff around, and what I might turn it into is, is strip out many of its weapon systems and magazines, and turn a few of them into what would essentially be um, small... Uh, Small carriers, uh, not small carriers, but small move, uh, ships that can move stuff around. You know, only 8,000 tons of capacity is really not a lot when you think about it. So it's always a bit of a, a bit of a problem. So we're going to change out our Hawks, uh, what we're going to be using in terms of we're going to build a lot more of the Comets and a lot fewer of the Hawk classes. So it's a bit of a change in the contract or the, the build order. So... We're going to go ahead and we're going to order probably only, what would it be, 96? But a very, very, very few number of 108, I think, Hawks we're going to build. Because it's 36 per carrier. We want to have three North America class carriers. So I order another 49 Hawk class vessels to be constructed. And I order a massive amount of more Comets to be built. And of course, the Comets are going to be cheaper, so this does actually reduce our bill. So we're going to build 253 F-80 Comets additionally to what we've already built. So we've got like 280 plus uh, Comet class fighters, which doesn't isn't that much when you consider that like the modern US has like thousands of fighters. Um, but as we get you know up to up to carriers carrying dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of these fighters and fighter defense bases all over the place, we are going to really need to increase that number. And there's definitely an argument there for, even on the larger carriers, using the smaller vessels just for a um, number of, of, of rounds you can fire and just sheer quantity to overwhelm an opposing force. Uh, but losses can be extremely high in doing so, and I think having the, the larger fighters is more useful um, as a mainstay when we have that larger deck space that we can make use of. It's kind of the difference between what a jet-capable carrier can do and what a non-jet-capable carrier can do. But we are continuing our logistics efforts and uh, we're going to be building ourselves some more stuff. I think we ordered up some more maintenance supply vessels, I'm pretty sure, yep. Yeah. And we're talking around uh, terraformers and fuel harvesters and whatnot uh, for the purposes of harvesting judicial fuel, terraforming our additional colonies, um, and all this fantastic stuff. Complete is its orders. And 
movement, we're going to begin that that uh, tucking mo um, motion. That is. So we're going to be talking those terraformers over to Yorktown, which has a very close um, situation to being habitable, which is why I'm taking such an interest in it. Um, because with that able, with that terraforming very close, we can then get all the main mines moved over there. We can really start to flesh out Yorktown and that kind of one and an aquary area. As you can see here, we just need 0 0.06 additional oxygen before that's habitable. While on New Eden, we need 0.75 to get that to a habitable place. And Terra Nova just needs to warm up as far as I remember. FAA has been scrapped. And naval shipbuilding, we are going to be scrapping even more of these FAAs. We've built like over 200 of them sadly there isn't a auto scrap feature there's only an auto refit feature i should make a note to suggest that to steve to add but the uh, auto refit feature will come in handy when we you know want to refit like 35 fighters uh, to the b models of them but for now that's not really uh not really a possibility And we're going to be changing out some of the ordinances. So the Bunker Hill is now going to use the SIMSC2s, which we are now building. Now that's, of course, going to require that we bring everything in and have them redo their ordinance, which uh, is going to be quite the pain to do. But we're going to have to have all our frigates reset up their ordinance correctly as we build more of them. And we're going to need to start shipping out this ordinance to the colonies for them to use because right now a lot of our colonies have stockpiles of older like sim 4a's sim 8a's um, older missiles which are not really effectual in, in the modern uh, day right so you know it's it's definitely uh, an issue we're, we're going to kind of come across and my biggest concern like to be honest with you know the threat in uh, but not start and stuff like that. It's just number of missiles required to actually destroy the enemy ships in terms of their point defense capability. You know, we're going to probably need hundreds and thousands of missiles to be able to bring that that down, um, and that's going to take a lot um, of destroyer fire, a lot of cruiser fire, a lot of um, you know uh, fighter fire. It, it, it's going to require a hell of a lot from our side in terms of combining it. You know, car our carriers really are there for that projection to be able to send fighters over long distances and hit stuff. Um, but if they don't have enough firepower to get through, it doesn't really matter. As you can see here, we're also building these newer freighters. These are going to be the Block 2. They're, they're cheaper and they're way more fuel efficient, like more than double fuel efficient compared to our previous generation. So it's a really big deal. And we're continuing to research into the final power mod, which will make our missiles as fast as possible. Something that I also want to bring up is, of course, the um, research in regards to uh, ECM, or electronic countermeasures. This is going to be very important. I am going to have to invest into it, and I haven't done so already because it's a relatively expensive thing to do. But we are going to be forced to, because right now I'd liken our force to... A hybrid between World War II and modern day, in that we have relatively carries that are relatively small, with small fighter wings and not really the capacity to do massive amounts of volume. You know, a fighter is not as this uh, one fighter is not as deciding as you know uh, is in our time. While twenty one fighters is you know kind of the minimum you would need, because um, twenty one fighters of F 80s is only forty two missiles being fired, right? And that's pretty decent, but it's not great. Those 42 missiles can dis disable or destroy, you know, uh, an enemy ship, uh, a 10,000 ton enemy ship, uh, with those 8,000 tons of uh, comets. Um, and that's nice, but it's not, you know, it's not the, the biggest payload in the world that the previous F-8s had, which, you know, they could fire 64 missiles. 
but that does bring it with the cheaper cost and also the railguns, which we can overwhelm and hunt down an enemy. So these are our comets. We're going to be assigning here to the Columbia. So these are the uh, 21 comets. We're going to have two wings, and then we're also going to have reserve fighters. So in case one of the wings takes damage, we can replace them with some of the comets we have on board. So in effect, we have about 18 fighters actually fighting on this carrier. You know, and the, and these older carriers uh, you know, from the nineteen from the late nineteen seventies are very much your line carriers, um, colony patrol ships, command uh, p patrol command vessels. You know, we may have one of these in each system, you know, of certain significance that will just provide additional fire support and defense. Um, fighters can quickly react to stuff, and stationing these carriers allows us to immediately deploy a group. So. Yes, these carrier strike groups may not be the most powerful, but they can still do pretty good work. And what we may have to eventually do, if we do want to see them in more frontline roles, is have two light carriers together. Because, you know, two light carriers then would have 42 uh, F1 or F80 fighters and would have, you know, a much more capability to do stuff. So uh, combining them together wouldn't be you know, the worst idea. Um, and it does give us some flexibility, of course. We're setting up some fuel transportation, and that fuel transportation um, is going to be from, as I said, the fuel harvester 61 Signy over to Nelson Military Outpost. Um, though I then realize I'm going to need a lot more fuel harvesting over here in New Eden because we've been locally harvesting, but we only have like five fuel harvesters here, um, which they don't mind that much fuel or harvest that much fuel. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great in that regard. We are coming up to the 20th anniversary of um, our start, which is going to be January 1st, 1998. Um, and we've explored quite a few systems, though, again, obviously, we've, we've slowed down here. And uh, it's going to be quite interesting. Now, we have just built, recently, our sector command. So this is a uh, basically additional bonus that's going to be applied on top of everything to all of our mining and whatnot and that's a really big deal to have the kind of bonuses and the raw bonuses are a massive massive thing so it's a it's really big for me to be able to get that assign it up um and and eventually correctly sort it out i built a support vessel by mistake i was trying to build a salvager but we're gonna need that anyway uh for the plan um and we're going to have to be obviously replacing the support vessel with new engines. Um, yeah, we're going to have to be replacing that with new engines. But then I realized, okay, the engine efficiency is not going to be great, is it? Uh, yeah, it's not. But uh, you got I can't kind of think of how I'm going to use these vessels more. Either, you know, alongside fleet or not alongside fleet. There's going to be, there's definitely going to be some options. But... Uh, we do go for the uh, Ion Drive 9s. And I think probably what we're, the, what we're eventually going to change our doctrine with these support vessels is to use them not as underway vessels, but instead to use them as pre-positioned points with um, their own escort. So we may you know, provide a couple of destroyers uh, or three or four, you know, a few ships that will just sit with that support vessel at areas and then we'll be able to sit there and refuel um carrier groups that come in and out as needed right so that's going to provide us that ad additional range um, we also are probably going to need to build larger support vessels and so that's something that i'm going to have to look into otherwise we're not going to be able to support you know our massive 60,000 ton uh carriers um we also need to obviously start moving over a lot of ordnance and that's why i'm getting this ordnance transport fleet ready but we don't yet have enough ordnance to fill one of them so i'm not yet doing it Twenty fourth comet finishes up, and uh, we're in October of nineteen ninety seven. Uh, we also had some minerals being moved around. I've got a lot of my freight fleets now just heading back to Earth in preparation for those refits. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And uh, we are uh, making some decent progress uh, overall uh, with our. Um, with our fighters uh, in, in terms of construction. Uh, we're in a lot of them. I also built a third sector command. The reason for that is uh, range. You need more sets commands for actual range of its bonus. I realize it's not working. That's because I haven't made the sector yet, um, but I do eventually do that after figuring it out. 
I thought that maybe I didn't assign it correctly, but I did. And so what we do is we go ahead and assign that and then we go over to the command and I set up the sectors, uh, which takes a lot longer than it realistically should. So we set that as soul sector, soul sector, soul sector, and uh, we can set up things as soul, uh, sectors all over the place, which is really, really nice to do. And those exploration ships cannot come quickly enough, I will say that. Um, 26th Comet has been constructed and assigned to reserves. And we actually now get that bonus from our governor, of uh, from our sector command, so that's a 1.4, that's a 40.4%, or not 40% bonus. So now we're mining a lot more resources on a lot of these places, and that's really, really nice to see. Um, so that should hopefully, again, help with our current mineral situation. Um, Well, I also realized I need more mass drivers on those asteroids so they can actually send all those resources in time because that because we're mining so much now that it's actually you know, overflowing. So that has to be updated, that has to be done. Um, and so that's what, what we will, of course, do. Hmm. There goes the sector commands being constructed, and uh, I'm going to put the rest of that construction into. Well, I was considering converting to to automated mines. However, you know the cost of that is is pretty significant. So uh, I said decide to go ahead and uh, change that into space stations and building more orbital mining platforms. So we're going to build five more of them, and then we're probably going to stop building them just because we're winning out of asteroids to mine, though. You know, we are making progress to the south side of the galaxy in terms of getting uh, 56 Cabioses resources. Um, so we are we are making some progress in regards to that. And again, turn slow that has, uh, has, has been occurring. But uh, we are about to enter 1998 as the 20th anniversary of the start of the game when we first set forward into the galaxy. Uh, we've also moved to Columbia, and the Columbia is now sitting above um, Terra Nova, uh, if I remember correctly, which is awesome. Um, so that's uh, meaning that we can now get that away from Earth, and it's now you know, on its you know, uh, operational duties out in the frontier, providing additional protection to Terra Nova Prime now that it's hit 27 million people. Um, We also obviously have our support vessel. I need to, I, again, I need to resort a lot of this out. There, there is a lot to do, of course. Uh, I'm not sure what I do with this, though. Uh, we get a refuel resupply, and we probably send it somewhere or not. Um, we have a lot of colony ships just kind of waiting around, and that's a lot of that has to do with me um, waiting for a, a place to get fully terraformed, because we're currently terraforming like three different things right now, and Mars is, of course, one of them. Uh, in regards to Mars, we're currently waiting on the Hydrosphere to finish up. That's the main thing. Um, so, yeah, that is taking longer than I, I, I would expect, but what can you do, right? Um, you can't do much. <laughs> um, so these asteroids, I realized, okay, they're going to start to mine out relatively quickly. Uh, and with that in mind, we're going to have to move those to the new asteroids and you know, replace a few things. There's going to be a lot we're going to have to do in, in that regard. Uh, in terms of moving the mines around to new places, setting up new mass drivers, setting up new things to then ship those resources out, and then eventually we'll have to find a new system just at all. So we're now in February, and uh, the 33rd Comet class or F 80 vessel has finished up, so that's our fighters. And we're making good progress across the bottom with research, construction, and whatnot, and we're getting close to that, to that year 2000 deadline, and uh, I realize, okay, we're not going to have the carrier, but we're going to have the fighters, we're going to have the uh, first destroyers, and we're going to probably have construction on the way our first corvettes. And those new corvettes are going to be very, very, very important, because those corvettes are going to play a vital role in protecting our colonies. And you'll see that in the next episode, that it becomes a bit of an issue. Um... Overall, though, we are making good strides, and uh, we are able to unload the lemon We have a bit of an issue here, but um, 
we are kind of rely on this like one ship to move stuff back and forth in terms of minerals. Uh, we need to really increase the output overall. Um, and again, we have like one uh, 1600 mines sitting on earth that we need to be moving somewhere else and that's going to take a lot of work in terms of freight so we probably need to expand our slip base for our freight yards and, and there's a bunch of other stuff we have to do there um in terms of uh making them more efficient and then also we need to build like 10 15 more freighters or use civilians to start moving all that stuff off we do have a lot of civilians but they're currently like elsewhere so yeah um they're doing other jobs for us at the moment also, some of you may notice that our wealth is going down. That's because of our massive spending on research. I need to build some more financial centers and probably deploy them to Mars. Um, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. Also, probably move some military academies off Earth. Uh, diversify that. There's you know, just a few things that we <laughs> that we need to do. It's a lot to do, actually. Um, New Eden hitting 6.5 million people. Earth's at 2.7 million. Uh, not 2.7 uh, 2,700 million people, um, which is awesome to say, uh, though it uh, does give a lot of population to move around and to do, you know, ever-hungry population that needs jobs to, to fill. It's a large amount of unemployment when you think about it. And, uh, yeah. So we are now moving over uh, minerals back from Earth, or not from Earth, from New Eden correctly, after they're all obviously shipped in from the local system. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of these, like, places we have, a lot of these uh, colonies we have don't really have great mining, though somewhere like Shrew 2381 does, and that is going to be a big target for me. And 109 Query 1 has a lot of resources as well, but that's going to require automated mines. So what, you know, Yorktown's going to be is primarily a military base slash uh, colony that will handle the processing of those minerals outward, less so anything else, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really does help me out. Goodbye.